so here's kind of the background of the, the 360 event here. So we have done, I've, I've been doing these events now every couple months for the past 18 months, almost, almost two years now, man, no, it's like, yeah, it's almost, almost been two years. And it started out, um, I am, I, I've been in, in, in a personal growth and development leadership, uh, for two decades now, for many, many years. I, I love learning. I love growing and love, love changing. And I, I've read just a, tons of books on, on all the above topics. And I thought, man, just to, again, two years ago, I thought, man, I wonder if anybody else is in a growth like I am into learning and growing like I am. And so I just, I said, well, let me just do a leadership seminar just for guys to be better husbands, leaders, fathers, businessmen, that kind of thing, just as a test, just to see, you know, as a, as a trial, 90 men signed up for the event and it was just through my little network. And so I was like, wow, that's amazing. 30 guys didn't show up. Well, the 30 that didn't show up, they had sent me a message. It's, uh, a lot of them said, Hey, you know, I couldn't make it because of work or whatever, you know, family emergencies, whatever. Did you by any chance record the event? I said, yeah, actually I did. And they said, well, can we get access to it? Well, I don't have any administration, administrative skills to speak of. And so I said, well, man, how can I get this content to the men that missed the event while still, while not having to do a whole bunch of admin skills on my part. And so, so I created a Facebook group called the 360 movement personal growth tribe to house the content for these, these, the, you know, for the, the, for that event. Well, then I said, okay, if I did another event, how many of you guys would attend another one? Well, hundred percent of the hands were raised. Well, so that I was like, oh, cool. So maybe we're on to something. And then shortly thereafter, a few, a few days, a week or two afterwards, a bunch of the wives of the men who showed up were like, sent me messages like, what do we lunch meet? Like, why can't we come to these things? Right. So I'm like, oh man, <laughs> that's a great, you know, I, I hadn't like originally intended to leave out women, but I just wanted to see if it worked. So I said, yeah, you know, absolutely. So the second event, two months later, we did was on um, work-life balance. How many of you all have ever had to face that conversation or challenge of work-life balance? If you have, give me a little hashtag work-life balance in the chat log. If you have ever had that challenge, give me a little hashtag work-life balance in the chat log. Boom. Right? So absolutely, especially you know, for those of you all that are on here that are entrepreneurs, own businesses, that kind of thing. Well, and even if you don't, I mean, just if you're a professional, if you have a, you know, any kind of work life, business life, business life, family, kids, that kind of thing, it's, 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 a, it's a constant, you know, challenge. And so, boom, and then two months later, I did one on, um, on, on, let's see, we did it on, on assets. So finances, real estate and business, I had a number of keynote speakers, and then then we did one on developing leaders and then another one on relationships. And then a couple months later on um, uh, growth hacks, how to 10 X your life, like productivity hacks and stuff. Uh, uh, and then we just did one recently on emotional intelligence, the importance of EQ, emotional intelligence. And then the most recent one we did a month or so ago was on flow, the concept of the flow state being more intentional at, creating flow in your life. And there's a book called the rise of Superman, the chief growth officer from the flow research collective that a keynote for us on the concept of flow. So anyway, over two years of, of, of events like this for people that, and then here's the kind of the mission of the 360 movement. And I'm going to introduce David to you guys. Who's a super, super dude. Again, I'm super stoked for his, his uh, skinny today. Um, the mission of the 360 movement is to change the world by changing your world, by changing you, so that we can reach the world, restore brokenness, empower leaders and influencers, affirm gifts, strengths, talents, and superpowers, cultivate deep roots, harvest long-lasting legacy fruit. That is what we're all about, is we want to change the world by changing your world, by changing you. And I feel like God has called me specifically to leaders and influencers you know, across whatever spectrum that, that may, they may, that may fall in. And so I'm super excited now to transition to big David. So I was at a homeschool conference. Uh, I, a lot of you guys know we homeschool with classical conversations. We're super involved in the homeschool world. We love homeschooling. Uh, very passionate about it. And so we had this, this homeschool conference uh, a, a month ago, a couple months ago, something like that. And there was one of the keynote speakers at that event. There's 300 folks there from across the country. 
uh, the keynote speaker was a guy named D uh, uh, Mark Hamby. And he is the, the, and David can correct me if I mess this up, up here, but he is the founder and president of Lamp Lighter Ministries. Lamp Lighter Ministries. Somebody put that in the chat log for me. Lamp Lighter Ministries. Um, Lamp Lighter Ministries is a nonprofit that, and again, David can correct me if I'm wrong here, reaches like a million people on a, on a regular basis. Like, I don't know if it's monthly, yearly, something like that. But, uh, you know, they, they, uh, they reach like a million people. So through, through literature, books, shows, uh, you know, just a, a tremendous amount of, uh, they've got a school, they've got all kinds of stuff there. And, and so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, they, they reach a lot of people, right? Well, as he was speaking, he said he spent tens of thousands of dollars on marketing and um, yeah, marketing and, and, and consultants and advisors. And he said, none of that touched the impact that sending David, who, who's his son to uh, build your, the build your story brand course. And if you've read build your story brand, go ahead and give me a little hashtag build your story brand in the chat log for me. If you've read the book, build your story brand, put that in the chat log. It's an excellent, excellent, excellent book. So David attended the course, the, the, the you know, however many days, like a week long course in Nashville. And his, his, again, his father said, sending David to that course and bring him back to kind of advise Lamplighter Ministries using the story brand method completely changed their, their business, you know, their business, their impact, their reach, you know, that kind of thing. So I, man, as soon as I heard that, I made a beeline to his son, David, I said, David, what do you think about uh, expanding your reach and impact by speaking to our tribe, our audience on some of the principles that you have learned through building your story brand and through the application of those principles to their family business Lamplighter Ministries. So without further ado, let me make sure we still have Big David there. Where's Big David? Hey. <laughs> awesome. Big David. Yeah. All right, hey. Let's give it up for Big David. Great to have you, brother. Yeah. Noble. Thanks so much. It's super you, great bro. to be here. Um, it's cool to see too, just in the chat, how many people have already read the book. So uh, this might just be regurgitating some information you already know, but sometimes it's good to just have a little refresher. Um, I only got to meet Noble once, but um, it's pretty awesome to just uh, hear about kind of his story a little bit. And, and actually, some of the things that we're going to be talking about today um, parallel nicely with 360 Movement um, because, uh, well, I digress. You'll, when we fast forward, you'll see what I mean about what you're doing is actually paralleling a lot of the seven steps um, in story in what makes a great story in what you're doing with, uh, with your tribe here. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see a couple things before I jump right into it. I think this will take about 30 minutes, but if you all have to like jet during it, I get it. Um, but we've got, let me just see here. I'll share a presentation. Whew, 43 slides, but they're like one word slides. So it'll go pretty quick here. And, um, see, I've got a newborn uh, baby. He's four months old and a great Pyrenees dog. So if you he hear either crying or barking, that's life. Uh, so uh, I might jump off and get, maybe I'll have baby in the presentation at some point. His name's Grayson. So anyway, uh, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and dive into this. Um, feel free. I, I don't actually normally do this over Zoom. I normally do this live and, and it's like very interactive. So um, I'm not sure if you all have opportunity to be able to unmute. I think you do. Um, yeah. Yeah. Great. So yeah, let's, let's do that. It's, it shouldn't be me just talking at you the whole time. That's probably a recipe recipe for a bad story and, and we're going to be talking about what makes a good story anyway so yeah i mean as long as you know you you're not playing like jay-z in the background and like really disrupting the the thing i think we'll, we'll all be good let's learn from each other but let's see here tell me if you all can get this uh, i'm gonna um well let's dive let's dive right into it so um i'll, I'll give a little bit of a background uh to myself as we're kind of going through this but i'm not going to spend too long on myself because again as we get into the presentation you'll you'll kind of learn why I don't want to talk about myself too much um, because um, quite honestly, you don't care. And I, I don't mean like you're not caring people. I think you are probably very caring people, but you wake up every day, just like I do, where you are the hero to your story. You're doing things in your life 
uh, that you're wanting to get the most out of to benefit your story. Um, and so if I sat here and opened up this presentation with uh, 15 minutes on my, my, my life upbringing and my dad and family business and all of that, um, you might check out because it doesn't have a ton to do with your story. Um, and that's pretty quick, but that really is the basis to a lot of uh, what story brand is all about. And for those of you that have read Building a Story Brand, uh, we're going to dive, dive into it a little bit. So my background really quickly, um, I, I did study marketing and branding. Um, so I have a background in marketing and branding Then I ended up working for Apple for 11 years. Um, and managed stores around the United States, and then um, and then also worked on um, content creation for an internal kind of social media platform for Apple. So I have some experience in uh, copywriting, um, in branding and marketing, and then I have a degree also in graphic design and business. So all of that to say, that's like my that's my authority as for those of you that have read the book on on the subject matter. But with that said, I, I'm learning something new every day. Again, I'm a marketing and branding guy and marketing and branding as a whole, they have a lot to do with purpose and communicating your purpose. And, and you know, one of the things that most companies do is they, they do waste an enormous amount of money on marketing. Um, and kind of what Noble was talking about um, with my dad and his business as an example, um, I will say on the one hand, uh, they don't have these principles down at all. And we're, we're actually right in the, in the beginning stages of helping them clarify their message and iron out um, a, a pretty muddled corporate, corporate message that confuses people. And, and quick, long story short, um, they did end up spending, oh, I think it was like $60,000 for new, uh, new messaging, a new website, and none of it worked. Yeah, so, so my dad's business, they ended up spending a lot of money on, on kind of rebranding, remessaging, and, um, and creating a new website. But the problem that they had, it didn't work at all. And the reason it didn't work is because they had a team developing a website that ended up looking pretty, but it didn't communicate clearly with their customers. And so clarity in your copy, in your messaging is, is number one, it's foundational. Um, Having a clear message is so important. Having a clear message in the way that we communicate with our teams, a clear message on our website, in all of our branding, um, that's, that is paramount. And, and so we're gonna talk about how to do that um, as we go on here. So this is a real, uh, this is a real website actually. Um, let's just take a look really quickly at everything, everything going on here on this website. So we have the main header, um, your journey starts here. Uh, it's not really clear. Um, artisan innovative solutions, pretty, uh, pretty ambiguous words that don't, don't tell me a lot. And it has uh, learn more and get started. I don't know what I would get started on. And I'm definitely gonna have to click learn more because I, I have no idea what this company does. On the top, we have learn more, their mission, home about ambassadors and why start, why indeed. Um, so this is just a, one quick example of um, messaging that they might have felt was really creative with uh, their word choice but really when we look at this does anyone have a guess go ahead and take a stab at what this company does nobody okay well that's kind of the point yeah so when we're when we're communicating with our audience we need to be point blank on what it is that we do um, and how it is that we help um, and when you think about the last product that you buy, um, it was probably like, think about your last Amazon purchase. It was probably something that made you feel the most comfortable and that you understood very clearly. Right? So people don't, all, they don't buy products, um, that they, that they don't understand. And people buy products only after they read words that make them want to buy those products or hear words that make them want to buy those products. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's why messaging is super, super important. Uh, like again, you know, your, your last Amazon purchase, if you think of that, um, you probably read the description. If, if that was clear enough and you're like, that's kind of interesting, then you might've gone to the reviews and you're like, what are other people saying about this product? Does it work? And that would be the product that you chose. Not necessarily the best product. Um, and that, that's true too um, of, uh, I'll give just a quick example. Uh, so our, our I won't step on any political toes here, but the last election. So here's the question. What did Jeb Bush want to do for America? You can either try to chat it in here or shout it out. Exactly. Nobody knows. Nobody knows what Jeb Bush wanted to do for America. 
What did Donald Trump want to do for America? Well, I've got some, I got some nodding heads. Make America great again, right? It was quick, it was clear, it was simple. Now, again, I'm not, I'm not bringing up politics to talk about politics. I'm simply stating who's the president of the United States is the person who could communicate the clearest. People don't always follow the best leaders. They follow the ones that they can understand and they follow the ones that they feel are going to benefit them in their lives. So if you're a leader, if you're a manager, if you're in marketing, branding, um, copywriting, whatever it is, uh, it's, it's, it is essential to understand that people are going to follow a clear message, not necessarily um, the ones that are the best messages. Um, in understanding story and the elements of story, there's seven parts to it. But before we jump into it, we have to understand that the brain is really doing two things on a daily basis. Um, and this, this is true of all human brains. We're trying to survive and thrive, and we're trying to conserve calories. So if I say, hey, Noble, I, I wanna, let me, let me go ahead and uh, get you a refill on your coffee. Noble might say, man, David's a super nice guy. He's, he's getting me a, a refresh on my coffee. Um, and that's, he's just, he's just a kind person. What I'm really doing is pr in a primitive level, I'm saying, let me go ahead and get you a refill on your coffee because when barbarians come over the hill, um, Noble will fight with me. Um, and, and I'm, I'm doing things on a daily basis, whatever it is that we do, whether or not we're going to a restaurant, we're, um, buying things for our, our house clothing, we're doing things that make us or help us survive and thrive and, and and obviously that's a primitive level and then things break down from surviving and thriving to feeling liked and valued uh, in, in our social cues um, and the second thing we're always doing is we are trying to conserve calories um, and this is really important to understand when we're communicating um, because if you're if we're handing our customers so whether or not you're running a business or you're leading uh, leading your team if you're handing your team so Understanding those two things is essential um, when we are communicating our story because our brain, when we, we wake up, we are, we're doing things that are self-centered, again, not in a purposeful self-centeredness, that's just human nature. Um, so the bowling ball analogy, so, so think about when you're giving pieces of information. So a bowling ball, and this is much easier to do in person instead of over the web, but a bowling ball is simply a piece of information. Okay, so um, I'm gonna tell you something about my business. Um, so, so in my business, we do marketing funnels. Um, and I have to explain what we do with those marketing funnels. And I'm gonna hand you a bowling ball. That's that information that I just explained. Um, and then um, I go from that and I explain another thing that we do here in our business. And that's copywriting. We do copywriting for social media and that's another bowling ball. And I'm gonna hand that to you. Um, we also do um, branding solutions. Um, and then I'm gonna explain all of what we do within branding and I hand you that. So the question is, that's a lot of bowling balls. Uh, first of all, what happens when I give you one more piece of information about our business? I hand you one more bowling ball. Somebody shout it out. Well, you, you start to, I know for me, I start to lose track of all the different bowling balls I've got. Yeah, so you, you, you drop them, right? And how many bowling balls do you drop? when I hand you the fourth bowling ball? A uh, good chance I drop all of them. Exactly, yeah. So, so when we're thinking about communicating with our customers uh, or our, our team, you have to understand that giving somebody a piece of information about you and what you do is like handing somebody an eight pound bowling ball. And the more you hand them and the more complex the information is that you give them, well, that's like taking then three eight pound bowling balls and, and putting Vaseline on them the human brain is going back to surviving and thriving and conserving calories. We just say at that point, that's it. <laughs> you know, I can't take any more information. So we drop all of the bowling balls, right? And they disengage then from our brand. Um, so going back to just very simply, we have to be able to communicate clearly. That also means, you know, we, we need to be choosy in what we're communicating with our clients or our, our team. Um, you, you might say, well, David, I have 87 different products that, that we offer to our, uh, to our customers. Well, number one, uh, that might be too many products. Uh, number two, it's definitely too many products to communicate. You can have maybe a lot of different product lineups or things that you're communicating with your team, um, but they need to be subsidiary and you need to have one or two main messages 
that are very easy to understand because two bowling balls probably is the most that um, your, your clients are going to be able to handle. There's a mantra that's used around story brand and it's simply, if you confuse, you'll lose. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually currently getting my, I'm finishing up my MBA and uh, I'm in this accounting course right now and I don't like accounting, um, but I think I don't like accounting even more because um, the amount of information that's thrown at you is almost like, it's just information overload, right? So my brain becomes so taxed that I go, this is too many bowling balls, I check out, right? And then the end of the class comes around and I'm like, man, I'm going to have to go review everything because I don't know how to do anything the professor just said because it was too much information, right? Um, if you confuse, you'll lose. Um, that's true of the messaging on your website. That's true in the way you communicate with your team. Um, and um, clarity is, is king. Story is a sense-making device. And, and I guess what I mean by that is it is the way we make sense of the world. Um, think of a great story, any great story, um, you, it helps you make sense of something. So if something's really complex and somebody gives you an analogy and they explain it through a story, we're more apt to understand the basis of that story, especially if we're compelled or drawn into that story. And these are the seven elements. We're going to be talking about this um, a little bit in detail here. And I will say each point that we're about to talk about, the seven elements of what makes a great story has kind of um, different elements inside each one. And, and I'll, I'll send you the information on that because it's a little bit more in depth than we'll probably hit today. But, but let's talk about it. So every story um, first has a character. Uh, and so, so it's essential to understand what a character wants. If you asked me um, in what I do in marketing and branding and you said, what, what do your customers want? If I'm not able to answer that very quickly, then we have a problem. So in what you do in a team that you're leading, um, you, have, you have characters on your team and they want something. They want something from you. Or um, if you're a business owner, you have customers that want something. Those are characters that have needs. Um, when you agitate their desire, they enter into the story your brand is telling. Um, so you, you have to understand both what the, the character wants and you have to understand what it is that you offer them in, in, in packaging it for them. Um, those characters have a problem, right? So, so think of, um, uh, oh, let's, let's go with Lord of the Rings, popular one. So Frodo, um, Frodo has a problem, right? He's got a lot of problems, but somebody shouted out, what is one of, what of, what is one of Frodo's main problems? His desire for the ring. Okay, great. Yeah. So he's got this uh, strong desire for a ring, right? For the ring. Um, if Frodo in this story um, didn't have a problem, so when we're thinking about messaging for our, from our brands, if we're not constantly talking about the problem that our customers have, they, they're not going to engage in, in the story with us. So in the 360 movement, um, you can think about, well, the problem may be that the problem that you have is that you don't have uh, great resources for being inspired uh, to be a great leader at home and in business. And so Noble in what he does, he is able to solve that problem. Um, and, and that's why you go there because you want, you want to engage in, in a story that helps you at home and in business and in life, right? Um, it's essential to understand that a character has has a problem and that our business um, solves that problem. Uh, and that's where, where another character enters um, the story. Um, again, if you stop talking about your customer's problem, they stop paying attention because uh, at that point, they, they don't need you, right? This is where then we, we have the, the third element to the story. And this, in my opinion, is probably the most important. Uh, a character who has a problem meets the guide. So we're gonna go back to Frodo, right? He has a strong desire for the ring. Um, he does meet a guide in the story. Who is the guide in this story? Who's the guide to Frodo? Gandalf. Okay, some people do say Gandalf, and I don't disagree. Um, there's another one. Samwise? Sam, yes. You got it. So Sam is the guide to Frodo. When you think of, you think of a hero 
a hero in the story um, is the hero is Frodo. And when we think of heroes, often we think of like these perfect, powerful individuals. But when you think of Frodo, he was extremely fragile, right? He had problems, he, he had desires, and he needed, he needed somebody to guide him along this process, uh, this internal battle that he was having. And so Sam was really the, the strong one in the story. And, and he had the answers, he had authority to show Frodo the, the right way um, to kind of navigate these difficult psychological waters, right? And so the guide, this is, this is the big paradigm shift. And for those of you that have read Building a Story Brand, you'll kind of know this right away. Um, but this is the big paradigm shift in business and in leading. And that is never play the hero to your customers, always play the guide. Um, and so what I mean by that is if you're a business and you're constantly talking about your accolades and your products and what you do, that's amazing. Man, your customers are going to check out because last time, last time I checked when I woke up this morning, I was the hero to my story, right? So, so essentially what's happening is if, if you're constantly talking about um, your product, your services, why, why you're amazing and why they should buy from you because you're amazing or why they should follow you because you're a great leader, um, what, what's happening is if I meet somebody like that, I say, hey, it sounds like you have a really amazing story and, and I'd, like to, I'd like to be able to hear that story someday, but... I'm the hero to a story and it sounds like you're the hero to the story and I need you to step aside because what I'm looking for right now is a guide. Um, in everything that I do, in everything that I engage with, again, think about products that you buy, think about, um, think about websites that are engaging. There's normally something that, that says to you, we're going to be a guide to enable you to get from point A to point B to point C or to be better at leading or to be, to, to, to feel better in, in life, right? Like um, if it's something that's screaming at me, that almost, um, uh, that almost says we, we have, we have amazing things that, um, that you need uh, without saying we have amazing things that will enable you to be better, then, then I'm probably going to have a wall between them. So in everything that you're doing, make sure that you're being a guide um, to your customers being the hero. Make your customers the hero in every way. That's true of, of e your, all the messaging on your website. If it's about you and your business the whole time, um, you're, not, you're not being the guide to your customer's story. So we have a character with a problem who meets a guide. Um, yeah, your, your customer is the hero to the story, not your brand. And that's, that's really uh, important to understand. Uh, you should be the guide in, in helping your customers along. Who gives them a plan? Um, this one is, is kind of easy to understand, but it's often um, not executed very well. Um, in particular, this applies very specifically to, to the plan that we give our customers, like on our website. So when the plan is really complex, our customers will disengage, kind of back to the bowling ball analogy. If there are too many processes in a plan for how they get started, um, if I'm a real estate agent and I say, hey, you know, uh, we're gonna take you along the journey of buying a house. There are uh, 22, 22 different things we have to do. Jump in the car with me, we're gonna go look at a ton of houses. I'm already stressed out because I'm thinking, man, this is a lot of steps and, and this sounds like too much to me. But if I meet a real estate agent and, and they say, hey, buying a house is really easy, there are only three steps involved. Now, there might be 22 steps actually. Um, but those steps can be broken down and, and compartmentalized into three major steps. And we, as a guide, we have to give our customers a step-by-step -step plan. And quite honestly, the research has shown in marketing that if you list out steps one, two, and three on your website, you're going to have much greater engagement um, on uh, your calls to action, which we're about to talk about as well. So as a guide, we have to give them a plan, right? Uh, I don't, I can't actually think of it off the top of my head right now, but Sam gave Frodo a clear guide, right? When we think of um, websites that we, we understand exactly what to do and when to do it, it's because they've said you need to do step one and then step two and then step three. Um, so even putting those numbers on your website, steps one, two, and three in circles of how somebody can engage 
with your product and giving them a plan, that's really important. Um, they need the step-by-step -step plan to move forward or they won't. Um, if you're not telling them specifically what to do and how to engage with your brand or how to engage with you as a leader, if I'm, say, if I'm a leader and I'm saying, follow me, I'm gonna be going on this long journey and there's a, there's a river, there's a river, and I'm just, I'm saying, you know, follow me this way, you might have some apprehension because people are saying, well, there's a river in front of me. But if I say, hey, follow me this way, just walk to the edge of the river, all you have to do is take a step on that first rock, and then it's like the tiniest jump to the second rock, and then you're over it, and then, then you're back with me again. I'm giving a very clear step-by-step -step, um, actions uh, that, that your customers need to do in order to follow you. So we kind of alluded to this, after you give them a plan, you have to call them to action. Um, so calls to action, um, they need to be really, really clear. Um, by now, by now is a, a good example of a very clear call to action. So uh, in like the, uh, for, for the single folks out there uh, in the dating world, if, if, I had, if I had calls to action that were uh, similar to how certain websites do calls to action, so I'm at a, a cocktail party and I, I, approached, I approached someone and I say, do you wanna get started? No, <laughs> um, they don't wanna get started, right? I'm not giving them a very clear call to action. If I, if I say, learn more, um, no thanks. <laughs> like, um, so we need, to be, we need to be very clear. And, and in the, the documents that I'll send you, calls to action, there are really two main calls to action. There's what's called a transitional call to action. Um, and then there's a direct call to action. A direct call to action would be something like buy now. Um, and what's great about that call to action is that it either engages the customer. So they, they either say, I will buy now, or they say, I'm not going to buy now. And then the transitional call to action is something that they can do while they're waiting to buy. So if they're not ready to buy, um, you could give them a transitional call to action. Something like that might be a lead generator. Um, so for those of you that aren't familiar with a lead generator, if I say on my website, um, you know, uh, buy, buy now uh, this, you know, seminar series, you're like, man, I, I don't really know if I'm ready to buy now because I don't know if what you have to offer is really going to benefit me in my story. Well, then I might be able to say, if you're not ready to buy right now, download this free guide that has five elements to communicating clearly with your customers. Um, okay, great. Well, what you've done now in that transitional call to action is you've captured email addresses of people visiting your website. And then you can use a nurturing campaign in email to reach back out to those customers, to engage them, to then eventually get them to the direct call to action, which is buy now. It doesn't have to be buy now, but that's one example of a direct call to action. Th that needs to be clear. Um, if you're not being clear about that, they're, they're probably not going to take action. They're not going to engage in the brand. And I think too, this is where a lot of businesses have a false sense of humility because um, you know, buy now or some of these direct calls to action feel like we're being a little too aggressive with our customers, but that's not how customers see it. Um, customers see it as something that's very clear that we're wanting them to do. Um, so don't be too humble on your direct calls to action you can utilize humility a little bit more on your transitional calls to action and give them something for free. We have a character with a problem who meets a guide, who gives them a plan and calls them to action that results in either success or failure. So I said seven elements, they're I guess kind of eight if you're looking at the failure piece here as another one. Um, but we have to show our customers what their lives will look like after they've engaged in our brand. Or if you're a leader, you can show your team what their lives will look like after they've engaged with our brain. This is important to showcase what our products can do for them, right? And, and what their lives can feel like. Um, so again, you're being the guide to them being the hero. Uh, on websites, you know, uh, th this should be, this can be done poorly. So I'll state this with an asterisk, but this should be happy, smiley people in photos engaging with your brand. This shouldn't be a photo of your building because your building has nothing to do with that character's story, right? It has nothing to do with them. So in everything that you do in branding, think about 
being in your character or your, your customer's story and uh, in, in that showing, showing what success looks like, what their lives will be like. We call this the character transformation after they've done business with you uh, is really important. Conversely, it's also important to kind of show what failure would look like if they don't engage with your brand or with your story. So, you know, you don't want to be a fear monger here, um, but we call this the salt. So this is putting salt in the wound a little bit. Um, because if there are no stakes in the ground, um, if there are no stakes in the story, they're probably, they don't have a need for what you're offering anyway. So you show them what their life or what their business looks like after they've engaged with your brand um, in a successful way. And you might all also paint the picture of what their brand business leadership looks like if they don't engage with, their, with your brand. Um, th these are the seven elements of an effective story. And they don't have to be used in the exact sequence that they're in. So you might, you know, on like the header of a website, that, that could be the problem, right? That could be the, the, the failure piece. It could be what their lives look like if they don't engage with their brand. I wouldn't probably make that the header, but it could be, it could be that. Um, you know, where the plan is on the website, steps one, two, and three, and how they engage with your brand, um, that really can be anywhere. What you wanna avoid is all of the conversation about you. So as a, as a quick example, there's a lot of like about me, right? About me on people's websites. If you think about when you've went, when you've gone onto a website, maybe you've needed to get a piece of information about the owner of that business, maybe. Um, but you probably didn't spend a lot of time on the about me. You probably were figuring out a way or something that that brand was offering that was going to benefit you in your business and in your life. And the about me section it is about them. It's not, it's not benefiting you in any way to learn more about them. So, you know, as you're thinking about, and maybe some of you are pulling up your websites now, um, as you're thinking about kind of like how you're communicating with your tribe, with your audience, um, you're needing to, to make them the hero to the story and you need to position yourself as the guide. I hate reading off slides that you can read yourself, but uh, you can go ahead and, and read that as well. Um, yeah. And you know, this is, th this is important when, when we're even thinking about like um, d a company meeting, if we're designing a meeting, um, how, to, how to get the most out of a meeting is, is built into this seven step framework. Uh, for those of you that are like in film, there are definitely more than seven steps to, uh, to that kind of story. There are like 37 steps, but that's the basis of it. So this is, I'm gonna go ahead and click through so you can see them all here. So. Uh, the, the understanding a little bit clearer of what these seven elements do. Um, we have to ask ourselves, what do our customers want? Um, what are the customer's external, internal, and philosophical problems? How have we positioned our brand as the guide to them being the hero? How have we created a clear plan for the hero to win the day? Are our calls to action very clear? And have we showed them what success looks like? or what failure looks like as a result of not doing business with us. Going back to that quick mantra, uh, it is if you confuse, you'll lose. And that's really, really important. I'm gonna go back just a couple slides here. This is at mystorybrand.com. This is a free um, software that you can utilize and go through each of the seven elements um, to, to clarify your message. Um, this has you kind of fill out the character, um, understanding the internal, external, and philosophical problems that, uh, that the, the character has, meeting the guide, showcasing empathy and authority. Um, so I'm gonna send this to you, but this is also on mystorybrand.com and it's free um, to help you out there. So quick, quick website, kind of like overview here. Um, this was a, yeah, a, a particular brand that we, we had worked with. We strengthen your, your business, not, a, not necessarily a terrible website, Equify asset services, I have no idea what that is. Realizing confidence in your assets, I have no idea what it pertains to. So the rebrand you know, looks something a little bit more like this. Uh, five ways we make your company stronger and it clearly lists out um, those reasons. You have to be point blank um, on your website and in your communication. Because uh, if you're not, your, your, company, your, um, your customers are going to disengage with your, with your company. Uh, yeah, so ne next steps for you, again, <laughs> this, Three steps, right? 
Um, if you haven't read um, Building Story Brand, you can get it on Amazon um, or a local bookstore, which would be even better than getting it from Amazon. And uh, it's a really great book. It outlines the seven elements and goes much deeper into the story. Um, you can create a brand script on mystorybrand.com and then you can use that across all of your marketing collateral uh, from websites to everything. <laughs> um, again, if you confuse, you'll lose. And that's all I have. Any questions? Wow. <laughs> David, that was off the charts, man. That's fun stuff, isn't it? Oh, my goodness, bro. That was incredible. Can you? Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So, I, so we can... Uh... That, that was absolutely amazing. I'm stoked to, to go through this and really, really apply yeah. these principles and the stuff that you shared to the 360 movement. I know for, for me in particular, it's going to be a huge blessing what you shared there, brother. And I, I really appreciate that because here, here, you know, you know, I, I read the book and stuff and I've gone through it and everything, but I don't know, hearing you kind of, I don't know, you, you express some things in a way that, I don't know, unlock some things for me. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Thank you. And, and so by the way, I, I didn't make buildings. I didn't write building a story brand. I didn't create story brand. Uh, that's by author Donald Miller. I just happened to uh, become a certified guide. So kind of like what we're, you know, what we're talking about. Uh, I went through the, the workshop and seminars and then kind of took it a step further and, and got the, the certification. So that only gives me authority to be able to kind of to, to speak to this a little bit. So some real world examples of a company who is doing this right and a company who is doing this wrong. I'll be honest with you, I'll kind of answer that a little bit more globally. I think most businesses, and I mean most, are doing this wrong. Uh, when you're walking through the airport and you see a, a billboard, right, like on the sides, um, most of the time I, I kind of just think that's a waste of marketing money, that's a waste of marketing dollars, advertising dollars, because I'm not, I'm not engaging with a brand. There's nothing, there's normally not really much that I come across that makes, that invites me into a story uh, or that they're being invited into my story to, um, uh, to want enable my, to enable my life to be better than it was before engaging with their brand. Normally I see things that are um, kind of waving the flag of accolades for the company and and again, they're, they're, they're positioning themselves as the hero. So I think I had a couple examples on here just of, you know, of, of how brands do that most of the time. They talk about their products, their services. They talk about their certifications, awards, about me. And yeah, when, when we visit those kinds of things, just subconsciously, just humanly, um, that puts up a wall between us and that business. We're, we're looking for things that, even in simple things, when we, when we go to a restaurant, or we, we're, we're, we're thinking, well, let's say I'm hungry. So I'm thinking, okay, what, what am I going to go get that makes me feel better about myself? Maybe it's healthy food or, you know, kind of scratches that itch in terms of satisf satisfaction that I'm really looking for. So I, I, even in me getting food, I'm wanting to become the hero to my story. So if somebody did it successfully, they would enter into my story by saying, we, you know, they would agitate that desire. They would agitate that need. They would agitate that pain point, that problem. They'd say, you know, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe they'd say, isn't it terrible that Chick-fil-A is closed on Sunday? We have the best chicken that's open on Sunday, right? Like, cause they're, they're then agitating like, you're right. I was, I was either thinking about Chick-fil-A or it is a problem that I can't get Chick-fil-A on Sunday. And you're now showcasing that um, I can be the hero to getting chicken on Sunday. Um, you might not say that you have the best chicken in Tennessee or wherever it is that you live. So, I'm curious how you help identify the problem uh, for clients. So those of us who, who uh, have a, could, would be considered a luxury item. She's a photographer who mostly specializes in weddings, and she's at the top end of her market. How would you identify the problem in that case? Yeah. Okay. That's a great question. And that's, that's one that I actually get quite often for, for luxury items. It's interesting, both luxury items and nonprofits struggle with the story brand messaging framework a little bit. Let's see. I think I actually did a website for a photographer with uh, the story brand messaging framework. So um, you still have, you know, even as a, as a wedding photographer, you still have 
uh, customers or your, your clients who are wanting to be the hero to their story. So, you know, their wedding day, if, if your products and services are all about you and your camera and, you know, how many years of experience you have as a, have as a photographer, there might be some of that that gives you some authority um, that gives you credit. But yeah, all, all of that should be about uh, your, your couple being able to remember that special day forever um, so that the, they're the hero to that story and maybe even using some of that language as well. Um, yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, mystorybrand.com, when you, when you go to that website and you see the, the areas that you can enter in, it's really interesting because when you, you hear this framework and you see it, like let's say on this keynote or in a presentation, it kind of like makes sense and you can think of other companies, but when you try to do your own, it's actually very difficult. So I would encourage you, even in, in whatever business you are currently in, even if it's not a business that you're running, maybe you're working for a big corporate company, uh, try it out. Go to mystorybrand.com and try entering um, entering everything from character to problem to steps to take action and that kind of thing. Thank you so much. I know that leadership and attracting people to you sometimes, you have to become a good storyteller. This is something that I could work on on social media outside of the story brand website. What are some best practices to become a better storyteller? So so I've been with, with Apple for 11 years, managing, managing people mostly, and I struggle with this to this day um, because, and, and actually, let me give a really quick, really quick story. I know we're, we're running out of time here, but I, my early years of management, I had a, I had a leader, um, Devin, her name was, four foot 11, went to, West, went to West Point, and Noble, you went to West Point too, didn't you? I, I did. Yeah. So this was a, um, a leader who, who uh, was, she was very powerful, very, she was very intimidating. And um, in my early years of management, I asked her a question, uh, which was, this was the question. I said, what potential perils do you see a new manager entering into? And what advice would you give them of things to avoid um, in their first year of management? And she looked at me with this glare and she said, hmm, it's not about you, right? And I remember thinking at the time, like, wow, that really does not answer my question at all. Fast forward a couple of years, I distilled what she was saying. And, and really the basis of what she was saying is, David, in order for you to be a good leader, you have to understand that it is not about you. It is about your team. So I guess in, in looking at this question, I think the way I would answer that is, if you're going to be an effective leader, a strong leader, in looking through the story brand lens and framework, you have to understand that it is about your team, it is about your tribe, it is about the people that are engaging with your brand. And the more you know about them, the more you know about their problems and their pain points, the more you can become the guide to their story. So as a quick example, I know my employees, they wanna get better at what they do, they want promotions, and they, uh, they wanna feel valued, and they want a sense of purpose um, or, and or progress. Um, this is a great quote from William James. He said, the deepest principle of human nature is the craving to be appreciated. What I've learned in leadership is that people not only want to be appreciated, they want to be a part of something that is progressing. Um, and so the way you help people progress is you give them things in their job role, in their, in their personhood, in their personal life. You challenge them so that they are growing and they're progressing. And, you know, that, that's really important. Um, it's an important, it's an important thing to understand because the more you make things about you and your leadership and, 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 and making things about yourself, um, the less that your followers are going to want to engage with you. Great. Let me give a couple, these are a couple books too. One yeah. is Talk Like Ted by Carmine Gallo. Uh, they, they analyze the, he analyzed the top, the top 100 Ted talks and then broke That's it down great. and analyzed it. What, why did they get millions of views, tens of millions of views? And then the storyteller secret, uh, from also the same author who studied, again, the top 100 TED Talks and the history of TED Talks. Also, a couple, a couple great books to help with storytelling as well. There's just this one last one here from, from Aaron. What does that look like logistically, um, like personally? Um, just, just really quickly. So just from like a practical, tangible standpoint, uh, I, I might've worked for Apple for a decade, but I use G Suite religiously. So for all my employees, I have like a Google sheet with, you know, how they like to be managed, how they like to be recognized. Um, so I think you can do things that are intentional with really being very intentional and understanding your people. Um, 
and, and that can translate to your customers as well. Um, so that when I meet with my employees, I'm, I'm flexing my style as a leader to not only uh, get the most from my employees, but, but to be able to give the most of myself so that they're better at what they do. Maybe that means they're better in their job role. Maybe that means that they're better, um, that they become a better listener. Maybe it's soft skills, hard skills. But from a practical standpoint, I mean, yeah, literally utilize technology because I can't remember everything about my employees. Um, and that, th that's kind of another topic altogether, which would be situational leadership. Maybe we should do a thing on situational leadership sometime. That'd be good. It's called SL2. It's really, really neat. How do, we, how do we find you? How do we, where do we contact you? How do we get more information about the Ninja Guide, Big David? Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Uh, so uh, my email is hello at canvasbranding.com. Um, actually, uh, our new website should be launching on Tuesday of this week. So uh, yeah, hello at canvasbranding.com. You got it in there. You can email me there. Um, and then um, canvasbranding.com, again, Tuesday, I think our new site rolls out. So anyway. Now, now, Dave, uh, do, you, do you mind if, if, if we just hear a couple takeaways that folks got from your... From yeah, your I would love that. That'd be great. That okay? David, so for me, it was, I need to clarify uh, my message. I think for so long, I couldn't figure out what exactly am I trying to put out to the world. So yeah. to go back and really figure out what am I trying to put out and clarify that message. Um, brought a lot of clarity of what people want. Yeah, yeah, it's super important. Awesome, thanks for sharing. I think what I got today was the biggest thing was that my message should be about how I can make someone else's life better. Yeah, yeah, that, that was the big one for me too. That's the big paradigm shift. I was always trying to think about like, how I can make people look at me and my brand and no one cares. <laughs> right, right, now this is gonna benefit them, right? Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much for your time for today. Sharing. Yeah. Dave, I, I, first, I just wanted just to thank you for your time. Um, for me, it was when you described the bowling balls, and it, it gave me a better understanding of myself and how much information I can actually hold, um, especially like in our marriage. If it's if he talks a lot and I don't, uh, it's hard for me to listen to it all. That's what's <laughs> happening. It's, yeah. I thought it was pretty awesome that you used that analogy. It was really great. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for being transparent. <laughs> so I, I think this was really ego crushing for a lot of cholerics. Um, cause we always focus about ourselves and, you know, we like to talk about ourselves. So, uh, to think about how this impacts others, it was great. So we appreciate that because we, you know, we read a lot of personality plus stuff, but this right here took it to another level. Awesome. And thanks for sharing. Yeah. man, I'm glad people are getting stuff out of this. The biggest thing I took away was, is, uh, never play the hero to people, play the guy. Yeah. And that, that, that just really spoke to me. Uh, that's a, so thank you for that, that nugget right there. Yeah, absolutely. Yo, so David, you freaking changed my life, dude. Like this was absolutely amazing. You are Yoda of this stuff. Like I like <laughs> I was salivating the whole entire time I was on this thing, not because of your looks or anything like that. <laughs> I just kidding. <can't, laughs> uh, but anyways, but real quick, um, my name's Alika, and I think the biggest thing that I, I love is how you come about like what would your brand look like? What would your customers look like without your brand? Um, cause I, I think that's so important and, and something I would be so interested in, I probably would just email you about it is like, how do you even do what you do at your capacity? Cause there's a lot of people who are on here who are, um, helping other people to discover their brands as well. Like, how do you, um, manage all of that and then keep your sanity too and your own brand identity as well. You know what I mean? So anyways, I just wanted to say thank you for your time. And, uh, this was awesome. Awesome. Wow. That's great. Thank you for, thank you for sharing that. Hey, David. Um, man, can I say that you literally saved my life? I, I'm in college right now. Literally. I, yeah. I do pitch competitions and I'm like, why do I keep on getting second, third, fourth, fifth place? <laughs> and it's really because of the story. I love that you said you have to constantly talk about your problem in order to engage with the audience. And yeah. I was thinking about, you know, oh, my product has this, we do this for you, but not getting down to the central problem. And I can even relate that to any arguments or anything that I've been in. If I'm not talking, if you're not talking about the central problem, I doze off. I don't even care anymore. So that was just so key. And thank you so much because I'm going yeah. to be taking one home. So. Man, awesome. That's cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank All you right, for David, sharing. Um, 
I, I just want to revert back to a takeaway from earlier. You know, was, you basically said that um, regarding clarification. I think that's that's one of the main that's one of the key principles that someone needs to have if they're trying to uh, engage with someone because as humans we don't intentionally do it but we're all self-centered right so it's yeah. like you want to be like you said that god for someone to like under like um to let them know that okay well i realize i recognize that you have this problem let me show you a way that we can help you know solve this that you yeah. may have not have thought of or the resources resources may not have been provided to you i can help you with that so i think that's a huge takeaway in business and in life so Man. thanks for that that's good. You all, you all need your own YouTube channels and presentations on your, your own. You're wise. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm so just grateful for the opportunity to sit here and listen to you. It's been amazing to learn. Um, and I think one of the big things that I took away from it is kind of at the end when you were talking about, I think Alika was talking about this too a little bit, just about the idea of the difference between showing them not only what your product can do, but what happens if they don't engage with your product if they don't engage with your movement or your business or whatever it is um, yeah. just kind of literally painting the picture of two different worlds like which one do you want to live in because look we can help you get to this one but you got to engage with us so that was kind of a a big <coughs> a big thing for me awesome yeah thanks for sharing yeah that's important hey, this is jay and uh they actually stole all my takeaways <laughs> <laughs> And Alika did, and, 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 and what's her name? Laura. Laura just did as well. So the, the character transformation is amazing. I mean, that literally, you know, tells how the product actually helped people. And also when you're not taking them, how, you know, the life's going to look like. And I'm sorry, but, you know, Alika is my twin, but he just told my, you know, my takeaway. <laughs> and you are amazing. You are a great teacher. You really preach what you, literally what you do, because your, 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 your slide with very succinct, clear, and very easy to understand, and you're very articulate. So I just want to give you that. You are amazing. Man, I want to hang out with you. You make me feel great. Thank you so much. I, I really feel like you, you were pivotal in helping take our message that God has given each one of us to the next level, to be able to yeah. impact more people and have a greater impact. And so thank you for using your gifts and your training to benefit and add value to, to all the folks in our, in our circle and stuff. So thank you, brother. I love that. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And uh, yeah, like I said, from the beginning, I'll send I'll, Noble, I'll send you some, some just kind of like marketing collateral or some stuff that yeah, might absolutely. be beneficial to your tribe. Um, thank you all so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. Well, here's what I'd like us to do. Go ahead and put in the chat log, who, who is your customer? Who is the character? in your story who are you trying to reach who are you trying to be the guide of let's start with that question okay young black lady leaders brides there's another lady who calls it an ica who's your ideal customer avatar is is another way to say that homeschooling families believers and grooms women who feel stuck that have big dreams but don't know how to get there those who need an alternative alternative way to overcome pain and stress teenage girls entrepreneurs of a brand and want to deepen their brand experience, dreamers who want more out of life, recent post-college folks who want to satisfy the job they wanted, they thought they wanted, young professionals that are very driven and goal-oriented, leaders who are lost uh, or stuck in a box, women. <clears throat> so based on your answer, right? So, so your ICA, your ideal customer avatar, what is, what is the problem that they have? What is the problem that women have or leaders who are stuck in a, right? What is the problem that they have? Your ICA, your ideal customer avatar, what is their problem? Okay, so for Natasha's trust, yeah. Now, again, it's going to be different, right? You're, obviously, we had 50 different problems on there, which is going to have 50 different, I mean, 50 different customers or avatars, so it's going to have 50 different problems there. So self-image. Leaders who don't have a vehicle to use their talents and skills in the normal workforce, lack of supporting resources, educating, parenting, age, work-life balance. Need someone to journey through their wedding planning, okay? And, and a day who will accurately document their feelings and emotional journey through the day. Proper mindset, following Christ. Okay, so l l let me hit Amanda's there, just for, for example. And this may apply to some of you. Based on the problem that you just identified for your ICA, 
How does that problem make them feel? What is the feeling and the emotion behind the problem? So again, just using Amanda's as an example, needing someone to journey through the wedding, da da da. Which okay, yeah, that's great. You know, you know, every bride and groom definitely. But how does that make them feel? To to not have someone right to that they want that particular thing or uh, let's see, Lindsay's got hers is okay. So okay, feeling alone. That's a great one. Right, feeling alone. They're feeling alone based on the problem for Lindy, Lindsay's ICA. Uh, some lack of identity, direction, purpose. Um, folks who are feeling stuck in nine to five, feel they're stuck in a rigged system. Okay, so OPS, using Alicia's there, feeling they're stuck in a rigged system. What's that emotion though? What, what's the feeling like, like what is a, a, what does feeling stuck feel like? You know what I mean? What, like what dig deep, deep, deep. What is that? What is that emotion? Is it, is that exasperation? Is it hopelessness? Is it, is it disappointment? Is it right? What is that? See if you can pinpoint the emotion or feeling that is caused by the problem of your of your of your ICA, Jerry, you got your hand up. I did, Noble. I, I think a lot of the problems kind of are similar. And one thing I was thinking about was we've all been so institutionalized. It's almost like telling somebody to take your uniform off from the beginning. You know, we've been talking about this patch, that patch, this patch, that rank, whatever. And as we got older, and we're all we live by what we achieve. So to say not to talk about what we achieve is undressing somebody. So I'm thinking all of these have their own little fig leaves to them. So how do you get the fig leaves and create an answer to the problem? Because now they say not to do this. Everybody has to undress what they were living behind for all these years to start something new. So it is I think that's the challenge for all of us. And you were, it was kind of, it was kind of scratchy there, uh, the audio there a little bit. We, you know, many of us have been institutionalized, you know, again, many of us are military, military backgrounds, which is a very, a very, um, they do a lot of, let's say there's, uh, yeah, institutionalization, right? You, you get a lot of brainwashing, if you will. And it can be tough based on our institutionalization to, to be able to identify this stuff. I mean, like, for example, when he was sharing about the story brand and not being the hero, well, the, the military style of leadership is being the hero. You know what I mean? Like, that is the style of leadership in the military is I am your hero, right? I am your end all, be all. I am the leader. I'm the commander. I am da da da, da. It's almost like anti-story brand. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a very different style of leadership the story brand style of leadership is a very different style of leadership than the military. And so it can be difficult if you have a military training and indoctrination, if you will, to objectively be able to look at who are your customers and what are their real needs to be able to identify that stuff. If you've been institutionalized as long as some of us have been. Um, so no, I, I agree. That is, and, and so here's what I would say, I guess, to, what is helping me, and I don't say it's, I, I, I definitely have not arrived at any stretch, but what is helping me is going on my own emotional growth journey to be able to even identify some of these deeper emotions and feelings that not only oh, but I, I have, but those people that I'm interacting with have as well. My, my particular ICA, uh, ideal customer avatar, what their emotions and feelings are as well. Now that, that you know, we've identified you know, so your, your ICA, what their problem is, um, the feeling and emotion behind the problem based on that, how can, how can you position yourself as a guide in their story to address that feeling and emotion that is tied to their problem of your ideal customer avatar. In your messaging, and again, it's different for everyone on here, right? In your, whether it's your social media, whether it's your marketing, whether it's your website, all this stuff, 
How can you be more intentional? What are some ways to talk about their problem? Like, like let's say, for example, let's say, and, and I'm totally making this up, so I, I'm not thinking of anybody's ICAs here or even my own, but let's say anger is a problem, right? So one of the ICAs problems is anger. What are some ways that I can talk about anger to keep that message in front of my ICA? What are some ways, right? So, and I'm just using that as an example. So what are some ways that you can talk about the problem? So, so actually, Lindsay, it's not providing resources, oddly enough. That is further down. Remember, that's, that's, the, um, that's further down in the seven steps of the journey. So I'm still back on kind of that problem piece and, and that marketing and messaging. How can we talk about and keep that problem in front of our ICA so that they know we fully understand them? Right? How do you feel when you feel heard or understood, right? You like, it feels amazing, right? So how can we discuss that problem and keep that problem in front of our ICA so they know we truly understand them? Hey, look, I understand where you're coming from because I have felt uh, depressed or low self-image or again, whatever the problem is, right? Whatever that thing is that you're trying to meet, but what are some, and so think about it in terms of topics, because, because each of those would be a, a social media post or a marketing message or a, right, a branding message, that kind of thing that where we can specifically talk about their problem. Um, you know, and, and if we're creative, there's a hundred ways to talk about somebody's problem, but we've got to be creative in that, right? How can we be creative in talking about one problem, not 15 problems, but one to really make somebody feel, man, this girl, Lindsay gets me, man. Like, yes, that's how I feel. Oh yes. That's how I feel. Yes. That's how I feel. Where they, you know what I'm saying? So what are some ways that you can, that, yeah, that you can talk about your customer's problem in a way that makes them feel understood. Well, yes. Uh, what one way would, would probably be testimony. Okay. Let's say um, that I know Alika, for instance, you know, anger is one of his bigger problem. And, uh, and I say, Alika, man, I see what you went through and how you were able to, to really beat that anger situation that you have. Would you please, just me, give me like maybe a 30 or uh, maybe a, a two minute or three minute uh, video of how you really went through that, you know, just a snapshot of some of the steps that he took to, I mean, first talk about it, how, how anger make you feel and what are some of the, the trigger and how from anger he goes from being like the loving, nice guy to Hulk, you know, in a few seconds. So he explained that literally one or two minutes and I, I put that in there so that someone will, man, this is exactly what happened to me when I'm angry. Just that, you know. Okay, so, okay, Jay, so you hit, you hit on some great points there. So what are some ways, so how can we talk about our customer's problem? Well, put yourself in their shoes. So, okay, if anger is the thing, how, did, how do you feel when you're angry? What was the transition for when you were not angry to being angry? How did you stop being angry? What are the, what are the, what are the three primary uh, 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 things that you do when you're angry, right? And I'm just, I'm just going off the thing here, but you see like, the, like um, how long were you angry? What determined how long you were angry? What environment led to you being angry? What environment got you off of being, you know, stopped you from being angry? You know, what calmed you down? How long did it take to calm you down? What are some things that you tried to calm yourself down that you didn't work? What, what, has, what has added to your anger? What are some things that kept you angry, right? I mean, there's 15 things right there that, that all you could do separate marketing posts of. You could do of, of, of just, that's just 15 things there. 
what, what are the what are the layers of your anger, right? So, I, man, I was just a little upset when, you know, uh, uh, I couldn't find the right photographer. I was a little upset. Or, or how about this? Uh, uh, um, bad photographers, right? How does that make you feel? Like, I'm sure all of us have had a, a, an experience with bad photographers. Well, what was that experience like? Well, that's, man, you, you know, how do you feel when, when you've got someone that doesn't completely capture how you feel in photo man how does it right there's all kind you know there's that's a whole nother the whole list of of problems there or um the the young let's see young black women right so who 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 doesn't understand young young black women right Lindsay? who does understand them who who um what are the problems of young of young black women what what are their frustrations what are the pain points what are the Who's trying to help young black women? Who's great at helping young black women? Who's missing the mark on helping young black women? Who's, who's amazing at helping young black women? What makes them amazing at helping young black women, right? Whatever your ICA is, you know what I mean? So, so really, and, and, and you know, there's a, not to bust out our, our homeschooling model. Again, it's called Classical Conversations. And one of the things that they're awesome at doing is teaching us how to think and having the tools of thinking. So th there's, and again, I don't want to jump into it, but there's the thing called the five common topics that, that talk about how to go deeper in a, in a topic. So in the concept of, of, of so you Susan Lindsay's of helping young black women, man, there, there, there are thousands and thousands like that. I would even nail that down even more specific. Like what kind of young black women is it like what, what young black women is it, is it, inner city young black women? Is it, uh, uh, or, you know, is it a uh, uh, rural young black women? Is it young black women that are 18, that are teenagers? Are we talking 20s? Are we talking 30s? Is it professionals? Is it non-professional, right? What, what kind, like be more specific. Um, there's a cheesy, this is total, a total cheesy quote, but just get the concept. Riches are in the niches. Riches are in the niches. And again, it's a, it's a completely lame quote, but the concept is, again, the, the, like what's his name said? David said, clarity is king, confusion kills. Clarity is king, confusion kills. So, and it sounds going to, it almost sounds counterintuitive. Like, oh, well, I want to help young black women. I want to help all young black women. Well, that's, that's not specific enough. Like, you got to be more specific. Is it young black women in New York City? Is it young black women in the, you know that, that that graduated from college? Is it young black women that haven't gone to college, right? Who like try to really identify spe as specific as you can. You know what kind of brides and grooms do you want to help? You want to oh, I want to help all, all of them. Well, not if you're the upper end. Not you know not like I want to help brides and grooms that are making six figures a piece. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. I want to help brides and grooms that. That, 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 are, that, are, that live in cities, that live in, right, whatever, right? So you want to be as specific as possible in identifying who your ICA is. The more specific you can be, the more effective you're going to be at, at nailing down that problem, which is going to be, more, be, be better and more effective at nailing down that feeling of the problem, which now you can start building messaging around the feelings and emotions around the problem that the, that specific audience is that you that you've got you know what i mean another series that i'm super stoked about you that you guys did there in the 360 uh, movement facebook group a bunch of you guys shared how you are using your strengths thank you for taking the time to share how you are utilizing and growing your strengths because that's going to add a lot of value to the rest of us to get tips best practices that kind of thing if we have similar strengths, and even if we don't have similar strengths, you may be use, utilizing, growing, and implementing your strengths in ways that we haven't thought of yet. And so, um, so anyway, so that's that, I totally appreciate all you guys that have done that.